Welcome to Coco's 2D Tutorials, brought to you by Bob Eulon. For more information, go to bobeulon.com slash Coco's 2D. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to save data using a plist. plist stands for property list and is a simple way to achieve persistence. That is, data that outlives the execution of the program. For instance, a user that has achieved some score or some level might want to return to that score or level the next time he starts up the game. In this tutorial, we will use something called NS user defaults and it is a machinery that lets your app write data into a database and retrieve the data from that database. In order to do that you have to invoke the NS user defaults object which is an in-between between your app and the database. And what is this database? It is just a simple table containing keys and values. For instance, the value here is the string Bob and the key is a string called name. By the way, observe that all keys are strings. The value here is 44 and the key is age. The value here is NS array and the key is children. And this array will point to its element, in our case the strings Fanny and Adam. And that is really everything when it comes to NS user defaults. So let's go to Xcode. Just a moment, Bob, just a moment. My name is Alan. And I have some questions. Okay, let's hear them. My first question is, isn't the NS user defaults just intended for preferences? Yes, they are. But nothing stops you from using them for other things. What kind of objects can I save in the NS user defaults database? You can save NS strings, NS numbers, NS arrays, NS dictionaries, NS dates, and also NS data. And inside NS array and NS dictionary, the elements can also be of these types. But what if I want to save my custom class objects? In that case, you can use the classes NSKeyed Archiver and NSKeyed Unarchiver. But that's another tutorial. You have any more questions? Only one more question. Where can I find this database on my hard disk or on my device? You can use the following code to find the path to the library folder containing the database. The crucial function here is NS search path for directories in domains. And as the first parameter, you should specify NS library directory. And then you log it to the console and use that to find your way to the library folder. And inside that library folder, you will find the preferences folder, which you can open and your database will be there. It is having a name like com.yourcompany.appname.plist 
or something similar. Let's now go to Xcode and see how we can get some persistent data. We are inside Xcode. Our task is to make the score value persistent. And our plan is to use NS user defaults. What is NS user defaults? Let's go to the organizer and find out. Enter NS user defaults in the search field and hit enter. Choose class reference. We have a defaults database and we work against a cache but can force the data from the cache to be written to the database using the synchronization method. Let's look at the methods. The method standard user defaults is a class method which returns the defaults object which allows us to access the database. The method object for key is a method that given a key returns the corresponding object from the database. Let's take a look at it. The return value is the object associated with the specified key or nil if the key is not found. Go back. The method set object for key accepts an object and a key and writes the object into the database and associates the key with it. And the synchronize method forces an update of the database. Those four methods is all we need, so let's go back to our code and explore our starting point. In the interface file, we are declaring a label called score label. In the implementation file, in the init method, we create three items. The first item is called set score to one, and the selector is set one, which calls set label method with string 1. And that method sets the score label to whatever argument is provided. The second item is called set score to 2. And the selector is set 2, which calls set label method with string 2. The third item is called reset and the selector is set0, which calls set label method with a string 0. And here we add the items to a menu, then we add to the layer. The next thing we do is create our score label and add it to the layer. That's all that's happening here, so let's run. There we have our first item, the second item and the third item. And here is our score. 
If we click here, we change the score to 1. Click here, we change it to 2. Click on Reset and we set it back to 0. Let's set the score to 1. What happens if we quit the application and open it up again? Will the score value persist or not? So let's stop and run again. And as you can see, the score value does not persist. Let's use NS user defaults. Go back and in the set label method, we will write a comment write score string to the database. And in our init method, we comment read score string from the database. And when we have read it, we want to update the score label. Let's go to set label and write the score string to the database. First, we have to have our user defaults object. So we write NS user defaults. Let's call it something like UD equals NS user defaults standard user defaults. Now we have it. So let's send a message to it. UD set object and the object is the string for key and give it a name for instance the string key let's also force update of the database write ud synchronize Let's now go to init, to the read comment and write NS user defaults. Let's call it something like UD equals NS user defaults standard user defaults. And now let's take a string and as a string call it something like the string equals UD object for key and the key was the string key. Now it might happen that the very first time the user runs the application, the database does not exist. In that case, we have not written anything to it. And the string will have value nil. So let's check that. If the string, meaning it is not nil, then score label set string the string otherwise if it is nil score label 
set string zero and now it doesn't matter what we have up here so we can take it away let's see if this works build and run click on set score to 1 quit run again and now it is persistent click on set score to 2 quit run it works click on reset quit run and it is zero so the score value really is persistent thank you for watching